Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihade Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihade Pijana Valaba Kirivara Dadi Pijana Valaba Kirivara Dadi Yashodanandana Brajajana Pranjana Yashodanandana Brajajana Pranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachati Yamuna Tira Vanachate Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihade Jaya Radha Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Vishnupad Paramahamsa, Padi Raja Kacharya, Ashtotara Shatta Shish, Mother's Divine Grace, Hesi Bhakti Vrindha, Sami Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa, Padi Raja Kacharya, Ashtotara Shatta Shish, Mother's Divine Grace, Hesi Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Anantakoti Vaishnava Vrindha, Ki Jai. Namacharya Shri Haridas Shtaka Ki Jai. Prem Sekaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar. Shri Vasadi Gauda Bhakti Vrindha Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Kopa Kopa Nasha Makund Radha Kund Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Vrindha Vandam Ki Jai. Navadweep Dham Ki Jai. Ganga Yamuna Mai Ki Jai. Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai. Bhakti Deva Ki Jai. Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to the symbol devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Fifth Canto, Creative Impetus, Chapter 13, Ra Rahugana Converses with Judd Bar, and we're in Text 20. Rahugana Tvam Api He Advano Sya Sanyasta Danda Krita Buddha Maitraha Vasaj Chitatma Hari Sevaya Shitam Ganasim Adaya Tarati, 
param rahugana twam api yavad what is it yadvanos rahugana twam api yadvanosya sanyasta danda krita bhuta maitra Asajjitatma hari sevaya shitam Ganasim Ganasim adayatarati param Rahuganatvam api yadvanosya Sanyasta danda krita bhuta maitraha Sajjita Mahari Seva Yashitam Gyanasim Adaya Tarati Param Ruganatam Apishad Venosya Sanyasta Danda Kitabuta Maitraha Sajjita Mahari Seva Yashitam Yana sim adaya tarati param. Rahugana. O King Rahugana. Twam you. Api also. He certainly. Advanaha of the path of material existence. Asya this. Sanyasta Dandaha. Having given up the king's rod for punishing crim criminals. Kritabhuta Maitraha. Having become friendly to everyone. Asatjita Atma, whose mind is not attracted to the material pleasure of life. Hadisevaya, by the means of loving service to the Supreme Lord. Shitam, sharpened. Gana Asim, the sword of knowledge. Adaya, Taken in hand. Tara, cross over. Atiparam, to the ultimate end of spiritual existence. Translation commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. My dear King Rahugana, you are also a victim of the external energy, being situated on the path of attraction to material pleasure, so that you may become a Equal friend to all living entities, I now advise you to give up your kingly position in the rod by which you punish cr criminals. Give up attraction to the sense objects and take up the sword of knowledge sharpened by devotional service. Then you will be able to cut the hard knot of illusory energy and cross to the other side of the ocean of nescience. Purport. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna compares the material world to a tree of illusion from which one must cut oneself free. Narup Narupam asyeha tatopa labyate nanto na cha dir na cha sampratishta ash vatam enam suvarudamulam asanga shastrena 
dridain achitva tata padam tat parimargitat twam yasmin gatana nivartanti bujaha tam eva chadyam purusham prapadye yata pravitti prasrita purani. The real, this is from Bhagavad Gita 15, uh, 3 and 4. The real form of this tree cannot be perceived in this world. No one can understand where it ends, where it begins, or where its foundation is. But with determination, one must cut down this tree with the weapon of detachment. So doing, one must seek that place from which, having once gone, one never returns, and there surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, from whom everything has begun, and in whom everything is abiding since time immemorial. Bhagavad Gita 15.3-4 Om Ganati Vidandasya Gananjana Shalakya Chakshulan Madhita Mina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Bukam Gatiti Vachalam Pangam Langay Tegirim Yak Kripata Mahamvande Shri Guru Ndidita Nanam Bancha Kaputri Bishta Kripa Asuni Bevacha Patita Nanam Pavani Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhanityananda Shri Advaita Gadala Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Srila Prabhupada quotes Srila Prabhupada quotes the Bhagavad Gita chapter 15, the Yoga of the Supreme Person and verses 3 and 4 so I'll just read that with the purport well we just read it I'll, I'll read the purport um, we read the verses now Fifteen, three through four. It is now clearly stated that the real form of this banyan tree cannot be understood in this material world, since the root is upwards, the extension of the real tree is at the other end. When entangled with the material expansions of the tree, one cannot see how far the tree extends, nor can one see the beginning of this tree. Yet one has to find out the cause. I am the son of my father. My father is the son of such and such a person, etc., by searching in this way, one comes to Brahma, who is generated by the Garbhadakshayi Vishnu. Finally, in this way, when one reaches the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that is the end of research work. One has to search out the origin of this tree, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, through the association of persons who are in knowledge of that Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then, by understanding, one becomes gradually detached from this false reflection of reality, and by knowledge one could cut off the connection and actually become situated in the real tree. The word asanga is very important in this connection because the attachment for sense enjoyment and lorded it over material nature is very strong. Therefore, one must learn detachment by discussion of spiritual science based on authoritative scriptures, and one must hear from persons who are actually in knowledge. As a result of such discussion in the association of devotees, one comes to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then the first thing one must do is surrender to him. The description of that place whence having, one, whence have, having gone, one never returns to this false reflected tree is given here. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the original root from whom everything has emanated. To gain the favor of the, of the Personality of Godhead, one has only to surrender. And this is a result of performing devotional service by hearing, chanting, etc., he is the cause of the extension of the material world. This has already been explained by the Lord himself. Aham sarvasya prabhava. I am the origin of everything. Therefore, to get out of, it, of the entanglement of this strong banyan tree of material life, one must surrender to Krishna. As soon as one surrenders unto Krishna, one becomes detached automatically from this material extension. So Srila Prabhupada points out that um, within this chapter 15 in, in what we just read that that we are entangled in this material world and the main source of this entanglement is uh, our material desires or specifically the desires <laughs> to lord it over material nature which when you talk about material nature it means um, within our minds, all, all that is moving and all that is not moving. <laughs> so that means everything and everyone. So all moving and non-moving um, 
So whether it's uh, natural resources or whether it's other people or whether it's other possessions, um, whatever it may be, right? We, as humans, we could have so many possessions. We want to lord it over those things and people. Um, and therefore, this propensity to lord it over material nature has to be, um, it's, it's not healthy, it's not good, and it's not in nature, it's not in our um, constitutional position to actually do this, to have these desires. And therefore, the process of Krishna consciousness means um, gradually or not so gradually, means fastly, getting rid of these uh, desires to lord it over material nature. And uh, within every ashram, the, the, the personalities in those particular ashrams have different um, uh, duties. For example, in the Brahmacharya ashram, one of the main sacrifices is uh, swadhyaya, to study Vedic literature. It means to hear classes, to study, to try to understand. And I thought about this because, in, because brahmacharis, um, by nature, the, their lifestyle um, will um, allow them to do that more, in many cases, than the lifestyle of a, of a householder. Um, because there's a lot going on in household life. <laughs> of course, there's a lot going on in Brahmacharya ashram life as well, but in household life, there's other people, you know, wife, kids, there's working eight hours at least a day. There's a lot going on. So the ability to study, of course, <laughs> not saying that householders shouldn't study, they should also study, um, but... In many ways, the brahmacharis, that's, you know, that's one of, yeah, that's their main, one of their main businesses, forms of sacrifice to study. Whereas the householders to give charity. Uh, it's mentioned in the Bhagav Srimad Bhagavatam. So these are different ways that will help um, us get free from this desire to lord it over material nature. Um, and in the very end of the purport, or the end of this chapter of chapter 15, Shri Prabhupada, there's a paragraph here. Um, I'll read it. It's the end of the paragraph, or end of the chapter. <coughs> when one is performing devotional service in the association of pure devotees and full Krishna consciousness, there are certain things which require to be vanquished altogether. The most important thing one has to surmount is weakness of the heart. The first fall down is caused by the desire to lord it over material nature. Thus one gives up the transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord. The second weakness of the heart is that, one, that as one increases the propensity to lord it over material nature, he becomes attached to matter and the possession of matter. The problems of material existence are due to these weaknesses of the heart. So we desire to lord it over material nature, and we come in contact with the objects of the senses, things, people, and then we um, become attached, materially attached. These are the problems. In this chapter, the first five verses describe the process of freeing oneself from these weaknesses of heart, and the rest of the chapter from the sixth verse through the end discusses Purushottama Yoga. Uh, so, so yeah, it's a it's 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 a process, but the process will be faster or slower depending on us, um, not completely, but to a degree. Um, how willing are we able to surrender to the process? How willing how willing are we able to follow uh, the injunctions of the spiritual master, the the saintly persons in the scriptures? Um, and you could say that is the difficulty that uh, 
we have a difficulty being trained. We have a hard time accepting training. Um, and what does that mean? It means that uh, we make simple things uh, difficult. We make simple things difficult. Like Krishna, Krishna consciousness, it's very simple, but we make it difficult. Like, um, anyways, I was speaking to some person some weeks ago at the Sunday feast, and um, they were saying, she was saying, there was a couple there, I was speaking with both of them, and she was saying how, um, why do we have to follow religion? It's, in many ways, the principles are, are very um, common sense. It's just common sense. Oh, you, you be nice to people. Well, that's pretty common sense, and, you know. Many of the principles are common sense. And actually, Srila Prabhupada said that about Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is common sense. Uh, but I told her that there's more to the practice of religion than just being nonviolent and kind and this and that. There's, there's more than that, mainly learning how to love Krishna, learning how to love the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And there's a lot more happiness to be obtained in Krishna consciousness than there is in just living a pious life or a common sense life. So anyways, that's what I was telling her. Uh, so it is common sense, it is simple, but somehow or other, um, people have a hard time following. And this is be due to being in the lower modes of material nature, um, like the mode of ignorance. Um, Mode of ignorance is just laziness. Oh, I don't want to do it. It's too difficult. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't have time to do it. It's just the mode of ignorance. Um, and the more we're in the mode of ignorance, the more we suffer. And the more there's a chance for us to, of, of complete falling down. Um, so this idea of... Um, of cutting corners, like, oh, let's just make it easy for myself. Yeah, but making it easy for yourself, it's, we're, we're in a community. If you want to live like a pig, go, go do it somewhere else. <laughs> you want to be a bachelor pig, go, you know, Pacific Beach is full of them, go join them. But um, we can't say, oh, I'm just going to be a bachelor pig, you know, by myself, and it's not going to... Um, it's not going to affect everybody else. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> it's, it is going to affect everybody else. And that's what it means to live in a community, that whatever we do, whatever we think, actually affects everybody else. Like one devotee, or Tirtamash told me one time that this devotee went on a book distribution, and he's supposed to be distributing books. <laughs> and he was, <laughs> but <laughs> Anyways, Tirtamar said that when he came back from book distribution, he went on traveling Sangatan. When he came back, it looked like he was just, uh, there was like lust written all over his face. You know, he was just lusting out the whole time, you know. You know, because moving in the material world, there's lots of sense objects, namely for a man, woman, right? Um, but that affects the atmosphere. If somebody's, um, if somebody's uh, mind is dwelling on the sense object lust, if one is surrendering to their lust, that, that affects the atmosphere. Or keeping things clean, keeping things tidy, keeping things organized, right? It affects the atmosphere. So we can't think that we're just, um, that, that what we do doesn't affect, because it does. Uh, or just like the injunction, okay, the most important instruction of the spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada says, is to ch chant at least 16 rounds a day. That's the most important instruction. Um, but the thing, oh, okay, well, I don't know, that's kind of, you know. Pra Prabhupada, uh, that's actually concession, by the way. Um, the standard is to chant 64 rounds. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that whoever doesn't chant 64 rounds is considered to be fallen. Um, but this concession is there to chant 16 rounds. Sri the Prabhupada said because it, it's a concession for the Americans and Europeans who have a hard time 
concentrating with her goldfish uh, attention span, eight seconds, you know. It's a concession to chant 16 rounds a day. Means we're supposed to be doing more, um, ideally. Now, uh, but when we get into this lower mindset that, okay, well, I'll, okay, I'm supposed to chant 16 rounds, but okay, let me just do it slop, sloppy 16, right? Let me do a sloppy 16. I mean, I did it, you know, it's sloppy, but. Or you think, okay, let me just go down to 12. Let me go down to 8, you know. It, do, it, just, it doesn't work like that. The more we try to cut, 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 the more um, we have, we're not going to get out of this tree, this tree of entanglement. It just doesn't work like that. Um, what to speak of the four regulative principles? <laughs> All right, hey, well, you know, that one's kind of difficult. Let me, you know, get rid of it. Um, and people start whole movements on that. Um, you know, people leave the Krishna conscious movement and they start a movement on chanting eight rounds a day, maybe, and following a few principles. Um, or sometimes people, <laughs> sometimes people stay within the International Society of Krishna Consciousness and and uh, with this uh, following, not 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 following very strictly. Like Krita Nanda Goswami said, said that previously when people blooped, they left. They left ISKCON. Now, now they bloop and they stay. <laughs> um, so, and then we 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 start fi we start finding ourselves ta taking pleasure in which is actually not pleasurable at all. Like it's actually like it, it, it's actually hellish, and you start finding yourself taking pleasure in it. I mean, there's so many things I could think of, and I don't want to offend anybody, but um, so I'm not going to say it directly. But like, we we start taking f pleasure in things that are just not pleasurable. It's like when we were when we were you could say maybe experiencing more of the bliss of Krishna consciousness. When we would think of those other things, we'd think like, ah, oh, I'd rather die than do that. I'd rather. Um, it's just, um, and then people say, oh, that, that seems very attractive. And as that was being mentioned the other day um, by Govardhan Prabhu, that when people are in the hellish regions of existence, the lower planets, they get trained up to eat all types of abominable things. Absolutely disgusting. And then... They're getting trained up their mind, you know, the subtle body. So then, when they take their next birth in this material world, they say, "Oh, hey, it's not so bad, you know. I, I actually I enjoy it." <laughs> um, so this is what material nature is doing, um, or this is what we do to ourselves. That by allowing ourselves to be in the modes of material nature, the lower modes of material nature, we're dumbing down our consciousness, gradually dumbing, 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 and to the point that we're just like. Um, like a buffalo, and or worse, and we take pleasure in that which is not pleasurable at all, because our consciousness is so dumbed down. Um, <clears throat> so the process of Krishna consciousness means just to follow. It's very simple. Four regulative principles, chant 16 rounds, rise early in the morning, keep the surroundings clean, bathe regularly. Don't try to, don't try to skip out on bathing. Bathe regularly. Um, keep, keep, the, keep the temple grounds clean. Keep the, keep the kitchen clean. Keep everything clean. Uh, go out and preach Krishna conscious. It's very, very simple. But we start, you know, it's like cutting, cut, 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 cut. And then we're left with just... Our conscience becoming more, you know, dumbed down, dumbed down, dumbed down until we're just we're just absolutely in Maya. Um, so it's important that we're always we're always uh, not losing uh, track of these particular aspects, of the track of 
the 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 clear path um and if we are having difficulties oh man it's so difficult you know it's so difficult to chant 16 rounds. oh my god what it's so difficult to follow the four regular principles oh it's so difficult to keep things clean oh it's so difficult to go out and preach oh it's so difficult to you know bathe after i evacuate every time oh my god that's so difficult right it's so difficult. Everything has become so difficult. If it's so difficult, then um, we should go to Gornitai, we should bow down, lay on the floor, and we should beg them, please help me. Please help me. I'm in a fallen state. What is easy is difficult. Or excuse me, what is very easy is, is difficult for me. Please help me. Um, we should go to the Vaishnavas. Please help me. I'm in a fallen state. Um, but we can't just, like, remain in that state. <laughs> it's not acceptable. We can't remain in that state. We have to do something about it. Um, because, I mean, we could try to remain in the state, but by nature that state will... <laughs> like one devotee told me that, every, like every day, he would go to the front of the door, and he would look out the window. <laughs> he was a brahmachari. And he'd say, today, I'm going to leave. <laughs> he was looking at the window. Today, I'm going to leave, you know. Whereas vice versa, you have uh, in Prabhupada's uh, poems that the karmis, the materialistic, you know, grihamedi, sense enjoyers, you know, unfortunate conditioned souls, they're looking out their window. When is the Sankirtan devotees, when is the Sankirtan movement, when are they going to come and, and save me? You know, when are they going to save me? Um, but anyway, <laughs> this Brahmacharya, every day you look out the window, I'm leaving today. And then eventually we just kind of stay around and, you know, okay. And eventually he did leave. But, but devotees would do that also in the early days. Isca, um, they, they'd walk out, of the, walk out of the temple room, lobby, and there'd be Iskan bullets, Glubjumans. And then they'd be like, all right, today, I, this is too much. Uh, I can't deal with all the people, too many rules, too many regulations. This is too difficult. I'm out of here. All right, well, before I go, let me just take a Galabjman, you know, because I'm probably not going to get him anywhere else. So. And they take one, and then they take another one, and they take another one, and they keep on, you know. And then, all right, well, I'll stay around another day, you know, not so bad. <laughs> Maybe we should introduce that. I have Galabjmans. Um, so, yeah, it's, could, it, we, we want to leave, you know, we, we, if, we, if we're not experiencing the bliss of Krishna consciousness by trying our best to follow nicely, then yeah, naturally we want to leave. Hey, this, this is too much, I'm out of here. Um, but, and whatever, it's a free world, I mean. People could do whatever they want, you know. After this, <laughs> I mean, we're not chaining anybody here, you know. It's a free world. Um, but if we understand the necessity of being trained, if we understand the necessity of practicing Krishna consciousness, of spreading Krishna consciousness, then naturally we would find it valuable to stay. And Srila Prabhupada would say, best is to stay uh, a brahmachari perpetually. That's the best. Prabhupada said that. So I'm not saying that. Prabhupada said I mean, I'm saying it because Prabhupada said it. But also, if you read in Krishna book and the chapter Sudama Brahman, they meet, Krishna and Sudama Brahman meet. Um, Krishna is speaking to Sudama, Bra Sudama Brahman, and he's also saying that, oh, you best to stay a Brahmachari. It's interesting how Prabhupada words it in Krishna book. Same thing. So it's coming from Krishna. Um, because it's simple life, simple um, serving Guru and Krishna. And, but even if one doesn't stay perpetually, best is to stay as long as possible. That's the second bit, right? Um, and this, as Vijay Prabhu was mentioning yesterday uh, in his class, that to, to make a sacrifice, people are sacrificing them, their lives for so many things, right? Um, like for example, there's uh, and whatever it's there's so many sad conditions in the world and people are trying to help, but 
there was a whole uh, what is it called um uh they um perse- persecution right there's a group uh in china was it f- what did, how do you say f- they're at about Boa park a lot there's that meditation they do falling huh yeah falling gong something like that yeah f- yeah so they're in China, and devotees mentioned to me because they knew about them, the group, and they said that this group really pushed the limit. You know, um, means it's a communist country; you can't just go out and start picketing in front of the government uh, buildings and stuff. But they were pushing it, so naturally, the you know China came down on them quite hard. So now in Balboa Park, you have these people out there, and they're please sign up or please give your money towards this cause. We're trying to make people more aware of the persecution of China and so on. So there's so many things like that all over the world of America and, and people are dedicating their lives to it. So, but Srila Prabhupada said that to dedicate one's life to the spreading of Krishna consciousness through the distribution of Srila Prabhupada's books and other means of preaching is uh, the best welfare activity. And one should be will, one should be uh, ready to do that, to dedicate their life. Um, and this is what brahmacharya life is about. Uh, th- this is what brahmacharya life is about. It's about making a sacrifice. It's about dedicating oneself to the spreading of Krishna consciousness, to um, helping people, uh, keeping the temple cl- clean. I mean. People who are conscious, <laughs> when they come to a place and they see that it's clean, they say, oh, wow, this is very nice. I, I like this place. People who are conscious, when I, I'm talking about conscious, like more in the mode of goodness. And we just shouldn't think that devotees are. <laughs> There's also people, you know, in the mode of goodness. So when they come, they, they recognize, they notice both sides. So even on that level, um, or cooking, for example. It's a very important uh, aspect of um, preaching. Prabhupada said it's a secret weapon. So if we could learn how to um, cook very nicely for the lounge or for other things, then this is a secret weapon. It will <laughs> keep people coming back and become attracted to Krishna on that basis. Um, also, distributing books, if we become... Um, we learn the art, playing Murdunga. There's so many things. So an army is skilled in defeating the opposition party. They know how to defeat the opposing party. An army that's not trained is ineffective, is, will be, uh, yeah, ineffective. People think, oh, those guys are dead, you know. <laughs> We may not we not we may not be dead, but they think we're dead. For example, like we go out on Harinam sometimes, and actually it was nice. We went out to North Park, although it was a little slow out there. But some guy he was sitting there, and I uh, it was actually moving um, to me, but he was sitting there waiting for the bus, and he, his eyes were kind of watering a little bit and then he looked up at us when we we're chanting going by and he said where have you guys been where 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 have you guys been you know the Hare Krishnas um so anyways we kept on walking so we've been around we gave him a book and invitation um so they may we may not be dead we may be still you know around and right this comes around but sometimes people think we are dead because they don't see us you know they don't see us fighting out there so um so it's important to learn these arts because we're part of sankirtan uh, lord chaitanya's sankirtan movement so we have to army so we have to know the art the art of war right the art of battling and if you go out on a big harinam right <laughs> and no one knows how to play murdanga or keep a tune, or play cartels, or distribute books, 
or they make really bad cookies, <laughs> then um, it's very ineffective. People say, oh, okay, well, what's up with these guys, you know? But if it's, it's a great art, if they know how to do this very well, then it's very effective, just like in Poland, like in Jyumnaswami, he has this whole beautiful procession of you know, nicely dressed devotees and tilak and you know, nice murdanga players and prasadam. And it's very effective, people, you know. Um, so in other words, we shouldn't think, oh, wow, this is, a, this is an amusing point or this is a boring point that Balaram was making. Whether we think it's amusing or boring, that's not the point. The point is to we should take it as a personal, as a personal responsibility to learn <clears throat> these different arts. That's what I'm. That's why I mention it. I'm not just mention it to uh, for fun or something. I mention it because, as Sri the Prabhupada's followers, we should all take it as a personal responsibility to learn these different arts. And if we already have learned them, we should become better at them. Um, expert. And the sky is the limit. We should, oh, I learned enough. I learned enough how to distribute books, you know. We, but we could become better, 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 better. Or Murdunga or whatever. So we have Prakash learning Murdunga. That's good. Please. <laughs> for God's sake. For the conditioned soul's sake. Please learn Murdunga. Uh, well. Um, and lastly, that... Aside from learning these things, we can't learn them and just run away. All right, I learned Murdunga. I learned cooking. I learned cartels. I learned how to keep a tune. I learned how to give Bhagavatam class. Okay, there's the front door. I'm out of here. You know, sign me up, corporation. I'm ready to work. But to learn these things and to dedicate oneself for a substantial amount of time like Sri Darswami from Juhu Temple, who helped the Juhu Temple heavily in so many ways, the temple president there, and they asked him, which was brought up the other day, how, what makes a temple successful? A bunch of people who learn arts and then out the front door, you know, running off to the corporations to work? No. What makes a temple successful? He said 10 people, which means 10 people who know how the art of doing things. Doesn't mean 10, you know, unskilled, what to speak of, lazy or crazy people. It means 10 people who know, who are not lazy, who are not crazy, who know the art of how to do many things in Krishna consciousness. 10 people and 10 years. <coughs> That's how you get something going. <clears throat> it's a substantial amount of time. Um, so we should be willing, willing to learn and aside from learning to make a make a make a make a vow, make a dedication um, to to a temple, and also another thing, not just jumping around temple to temple like a wanderlust person, but you know, a temple. Hey, I learned and I helped out in Hari, and now I'm here, and then I'm, now I'm in here, and now I'm here, and now I'm here, and okay, well, how everything falls apart. We have to ten people, ten years at a particular temple. Um, I know one brahmachari, I won't say his name, maybe he's listening, I don't want to embarrass him, but maybe some of you know who I'm talking about, but I thought it was a good thing he did. He said, I, whatever happens, you know, in my life, I vow to be dedicated to Nugovardhan Dam, Hare Krishna, San Diego, for a X amount of years. And he said, then at that point, I'll make my choice, you know, whether I want to continue as a brahmachari or whether I want to, you know, move as a householder. And of course, as a householder, I mean, householders are contributing so much also here. So it's not that they're not contributing. But as a brahmachari, he made a vow to do that. And that's good. And it was a substantial a number of years, too. It wasn't just like, yeah, I'll stay here six months, maybe, <laughs> if they treat me good or, you know. If the prasadam's up to standard, I'll stay for six months. But it's actually a good number of years. I think until he was like 33 or something. And he's, and he's I don't want to embarrass him, so. Um, until he's 33, but he's, I don't know, 25 now or something. And he's already been, you know. So, of course, we could guess <laughs> who it is. But So, anyways, um, in this way, 
these are like practical ways in which we could um, be less entangled in this material world. And um, anyway, so I'll stop there. Does anybody <coughs> have any in-house question? Uh, 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 oh, Balaram Prabhu? Yes. Uh, okay, first in-house questions. I can't wait. No problem. I think Amogalila has something. Amogalila, <laughs> you had a... You wrote a song recently, huh? Um, just a reflection. Um, this idea you mentioned about how um, when you're in the modes um, and you're not experiencing the bliss of Krishna consciousness, um, you, f you, you find... Uh, pleasure in things that are actually unpleasurable, like yeah. being unclean and you know wasting yeah. time and things like that. Yeah, I've had that ex just to confirm your point. I've had that experience, and it's something I've been like kind of meditating on recently. Yeah, is that you know when I when I'm actually like serious about my about my sadhana and about you know, it feels like, it feels like I've like taken like a breath of fresh air, like I just kind of like surfaced mm -hmm. from just like drowning, you know, <laughs> and I've just and I just think back like oh my god like. You know, I was like, I was like, I wasn't paying attention to my rounds, and I was just like doing this and doing that, and like cutting so many corners. Like, oh my god! And then, um, and then, yeah. So, so, and then to keep that, of course, to keep that frame of mind is the goal. That consciousness is the goal. Yeah. But it's tough. It's tough sometimes. Yeah. So, but, but just to confirm that point, yeah. Um, I had something else, but I'm forgetting now. So maybe something else. Yeah. Just like for example, there's a. Let's say that there's a really enthusiastic devotee, and um, there, are, you know, there's many enthusiastic devotees, but there's actually cases where devotees, you know, they're 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 really, you know, the term fired up, you know, they're really enthusiastic, and then, and then um, somehow or other, they just start kind of like, you know, making slight little. You know deviations here, there, and <laughs> everywhere. And uh, like Vijay Prabhu told me, there's one devotee, and I don't know who he is, and it doesn't matter because we're just making a point here. But the devotee was like chanting his rounds, watching TV, and then and then Vijay Prabhu asked him, like, hey, "Come on, Prabhu, like, that's a little too much." Like, you know. Um. And the devotee said something very interesting. He said, oh, hey, well, this, this is the only way I could chant my rounds. Now, I don't think, I mean, I don't know the devotee, but knowing the nature of how things work and knowing a number of devotees, they start out not like that. They start out, you know, enthusiastic. And then they come to the point where they're chanting rounds, you know, in front of a television, and that's the only way they could do it. I mean, it's unfortunate. Um, yeah so yeah we want to be careful that we don't like we don't allow ourselves to or allow our minds specifically we don't allow our minds to be the boss to such a degree to, to any degree really but to the what to speak of to the degree that we find ourselves in very weird situations very awkward weird situations where we're taking pleasure in that, that which is not pleasurable. And that's why it's advised that we, have, we, we learn how to control our minds, control our senses, because the mind is separate from us. It's an entity whose business is it's, it's accepting and rejection, rejecting. And what, are they, what is the mind accepting and rejecting? Sense gratification, different forms. So, yeah, we have to be uh, careful. <clears throat> Yeah. I was watching a class of uh, <laughs> Chaitanya Chandra Charan and he was uh, speaking about how he came to Krishna consciousness. And when he first met devotees, he was really impressed, you know, by cleanliness, by their qualities. And uh, he said that whatever they ask me to do, I will sacrifice anything to do that for them, you know, make mm. made a vow. And, you know, I thought I'd, I'd mention that that, you know, if you have that uh, ability to sacrifice something, anything for devotees, that's just uh, such a great thing to do. Yeah. 
Yeah, Th that's an interesting point because he's saying that based on the devotees' uh, qualities and and who they were, he was willing to sacrifice anything. Which we see that in the case of Srila Prabhupada, that practically the whole, yeah, not practically, but um, factually, the enthusiasm the devotees had, Srila Prabhupada's disciples, and what they did was all coming from Srila Prabhupada, and that they were absolutely um, impressed. Prabhupada captured their heart, their hearts, and therefore they were willing to make any sacrifice for him. Um, and that should be the position of the spiritual master, that the spiritual master should be able to inspire such feelings <clears throat> in the devotees, they're, they're specifically their disciples. Um, or also preachers. Preachers should be able to inspire that, those feelings <coughs> in, um, in people. But uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, in many ways, uh, it's a challenge, right, to try to be a follower of Srila Prabhupada because, you know, like um, a Kinshina Das, Kinshina Krishna Das Babaji told one devotee that that Shri the that his divine grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada was the was the um what do we say the the best acharya ever, you know, the the most powerful acharya. Um and we see what Prabhupada did was I mean um quite inconceivable. So uh yeah. But but it's important to try to, because we're in the, it's a sankirtan yagya, right? Sacrifice. So we have to make a sacrifice. It's, there's just no way around it. We can't be part of the sankirtan yagya, sankirtan movement without making a sacrifice. So, but it's, it's, it's actually, <laughs> it is actually what, what gives the highest pleasure. It's not like, oh, great. Oh no, I have to make a sacrifice. Oh no, I have to sacrifice my body, my time, my energy, my words. Oh, great. You know, I could be doing so many other things, right? But it's actually the highest pleasure. Um, so, all right, does anybody have any other soul? Hi, Krishna Balaram. Um, I just wanted to point out the other day I was talking to this nice devotee and we were talking, we, we went on a walk and I asked him a question a couple of times and he was just going back and I asked him, what does a devotee do when, when he loses like, like this sincerity or what, what does that mean? And he's just like, oh, that's like strict in your sadhana. And then little by little, it's like he falls down and I asked him, what is sincerity actually? Like, what is it? So the sincerity is just like you just want to please Krishna and devotees and the spiritual master. And I thought that was pretty prominent. So you thought it was pretty what? Like kind of like the essence of this, like pleasing. Krishna. Yeah, yeah. The essence of spiritual life is uh, doing things for the pleasure of the spiritual master, yeah. Yes. What happens when we, you know, Talking about yagya. Can you bring it a little closer? When we're sacrificing yagya, but we tend to sacrifice too much. Like, like, what if we don't have, like, we sacrifice a lot that we don't have, you know? Like, taking a bigger bite than we can chew. So, man, this is a little bit too much like a hand. Well, you should. <laughs> if you're taking a bigger bite, you should chew, then you could chew. Well, you might need to, uh, Anyways, I was trying to think of a clever thing to say, but couldn't think of one. But you should, um, the thing is, uh, it's kind of like building up our, like our, like our muscles, like when you're working out, it means working out the body. So it's painful, right? Oh, it's painful, it's painful. Then, like even sometimes when devotees go out in books, right, the first time it's like very difficult, painful, and, you know, go out for one hour, it's just like, oh, man. And then two hours, and you keep on going higher, 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 and <clears throat> pretty much you're, at one point you go out for many hours, and uh, no problem. And whatever it is, there's whatever management responsibilities, you know, to 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 manage at one point to manage uh, 
to manage keeping the ashram clean is like a big, you know, strain, right? It's like, oh man, this is like a lot. And then one could be, one becomes temple president and they have to manage more and then one becomes whatever GBC and they have to manage more and then so but uh, but to to put somebody in the position of a GBC for example just right off the bat it just won't work so we have to build up you know build our muscles so but we should try to push push ourselves um and uh, if we feel that we're pushing ourselves too much, that will become clear through direction of the spiritual master and other devotees. We should also try to take advice. Okay, uh, Vijay Krishna. Uh, yes, Balaram Prabhu, uh, Prabhu. pronounced. Um, my question is, what happens to my knowledge after becoming sharpened? By devotional service, is it that devotional knowledge is the same as becoming devotionally active? <laughs> okay. Well, there's jnana and vijnana, so there's knowledge, theoretical knowledge, and then there's realized knowledge. So when one's knowledge becomes sharpened, <clears throat> when one's knowledge becomes sharpened by this. Uh, what did you say? Huh? Uh, sh sh sharpened by uh, devotional service. Yeah, sharpened by devotional service. Um, it uh, <clears throat> it means that our knowledge becomes realized um, because <clears throat> in mint, there's for example there's so many scholars and uh, so on, who, who, who know the Bhagavad Gita, maybe even better than some devotees, uh, theoretically. But they don't really understand it, uh, means the, the uh, essence of it. Just like Tamal Krishna Goswami spoke with that one Sanskrit professor, and he said, Do you, uh, did you understand the Bhagavad Gita? The man said, yes. And then Tamal Krishna Goswami said, well, now, what are you going to do about it? And the professor was a little confused. Was, what do you mean, do about it? What, what do you mean by that? So the knowledge <coughs> is a call to action. And, and you could say that uh, us having the theoretical knowledge of the books, Srila Prabhupada's books, um, if we actually see it as a call to action, and if we engage in devotional service, then that devotional service will... Uh, sharpen uh, the knowledge. And ultimately, right, Vasudeva, Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga, Priyojitaha, that um, by engaging in uh, the devotional service of Krishna, then what happens? Um, causeless knowledge and detachment arises, right? Yeah, knowledge and detachment arises. <clears throat> so, Bhaktivedanta, the, the conclusion of all knowledge, the end of all knowledge is devotion. So, um, does anybody else, Dravida Prabhu or anybody else have anything about, want to say something about that? Because it has to do with the, the, the sword of knowledge. Yeah. I think he's asking about that. Yeah. If you recall the end of the previous chapter, he, has, he used the same language. Tasman naro asangu susanga, asangu susanga jata gyanasine natma vivrikna moha. Gyanasine is right there. And then what? Hadin tadi ha katana shudha vyan labda smtir yat yati param advana. This atiparam is also here in this verse. So he's, re he's repeating the, the, uh, the uh, same instruction, but he's making it more personal for the, for this, for the, uh, for the, uh, for the king. And that is that one has to sharpen that sword of knowledge, cut off all the illusion, and then by the process of hearing and chanting, and you go back, back to God. So he's saying some, the same thing with the king, but he's saying, hey, if you want to do this, a sangha susanga, you have to give up your position. 
uh, you have to put down the sword of control, stop identifying yourself as the king. And uh, the good association, and, and I looked at the next verse, the king is saying, yeah, you're my good association. <laughs> he said, you're not? He says, you are my good association oh, you are. To, okay. to develop this. So it's, all, it, it's, it's very interesting. And that, that sort of knowledge is developed by association with devotees. Now, related to your class, is that the tragedy is when you start cutting corners, you become uncomfortable in the association of devotees. Because you're in an ashram where people are trying to struggle, and you're, you know, that's just the way Krishna works. That's why we left the spiritual world. He kicked us out because we were making it, we were making others uncomfortable. We were, and forget, and don't forget that last, second last verse, or, or near the end of, of chapter seven, Itcha Dvesha Samutena, Dunda Mohena Bharata. Prabhupada said, This is how we came to the material world. Itcha Dvesha, we desired our own happiness and we hated the service of Krishna. And, and because of that, we put into this world of dualities, which continues until we become serious about devotional service. Yeah. So if you know these things, if you have the, the sort of knowledge, that can, can wake you up from your getting back into the dream of trying to enjoy and, make, and, and cutting corners and trying to be kicked down. Well, that's something about that, Vijay Krishna Prabhu. Yes, uh, as usual outstanding answers uh, to my questions. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you, Hare Krishna. Grantar Shumad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.